One family at the zoo is living as an all-female group, the South American capybaras. It's a really diverse group. You know, you've got Lily, who's the grandma, and then you've got Malari, her daughter, you've got the granddaughters, the aunts, the cousins. There's, they're all in there. Until recently, Dad Jeff was living with them, but the keepers had to intervene when grandmother Lily fell pregnant. He would normally be there, but in the past he has been a bit of a troublemaker. When they give birth, with all the hormones are going on, he's like, right, I need to mate you now. And she's like, no, mate, I'm in the middle of giving birth. Can you not? Yeah. <laughs> Capybaras are the world's biggest rodent. Weighing up to 60 kilos, they're one of the favorite animals with visitors at the zoo. You hear people saying, oh, it's a giant guinea pig. And effectively, that is exactly what it is. The keepers are hoping that soon the herd of 10 will be significantly increasing. So that one there is Lily. And uh, you can see by the size of her, she's obviously very pregnant. She's huge. So she is uh, due to give birth very soon. So Lily, she's really cool. We like Lily. She's kind of like the matriarch of our group, I suppose. She's had about sort of 10 to 15 babies in the time she's been at Chester. Um, so she's a very prolific female. We had five capybara pups from Lily about a year and a half ago. So we know she can have big litters and she can rear big litters. Capybaras can have up to eight babies at a time and can have the same number of teats, so they can nurse their large litters. If you look at the animals in the wild, um, you know, they'll be exposed to predators. Having a larger litter, there's more chance of at least one surviving. Being born into a big group can definitely have its advantages. There's less probability that it will be you that gets taken and eaten. It will probably be one of your brothers or sisters if you get lucky. Based on how big Lily is at the moment, there's got to be at least four, if not five, maybe even six pups in there. I've literally never seen her looking this big. Sometimes we do have a little sort of sweepstake. How many will she have this time? Kind of get gloating rights if, if you win. I mean, it's a, it's a big belly, isn't it? So I'm going to go with five again, I think. Now at the end of her four and a half month pregnancy, when Lily gives birth, life for the all-female group and for the keepers will change. It's really nice to have a big group. There's always something going on. But if you get a lot of males in a litter, they are a bit more feisty. So yeah, Lily would be having a nightmare for a start. She'd have a bit of a headache trying to keep on top of them all. And they do a lot of poo. But if we have another five to seven babies, that's five to seven times more poo. It's 9 a.m. And at the Capybara paddock, a surprise is in store for the keepers. There it is. One whole baby capybara. And we thought she had a whole family in there. If you were fat enough for about 20. She's actually only presented us with one, so not all we expected at all. A single baby boy might not be what was expected, but Henry is soon changing the dynamic of the all-female group. Henry is such a bundle of little energy and fun. I think he knows that he is the only uh, baby in the group at the moment. So he is quite independent already. Capybara babies are precocial at birth. Precocial is, is basically the term you use for an animal that's very well developed. They come out running, keep moving, so they don't need to sit anywhere and get eaten by someone. Plenty of things that want to eat a capybara. Things like jaguar, um, caiman. Apparently they taste like fish. In South America, people eat them instead of fish on a Friday. Lily usually has litters of multiple babies, but Henry only has adults to interact with. He doesn't have any litter mates. It does mean he hasn't got anybody of his own size to sort of play with or muck around with. I suppose it is a bit of a shame for him to be the only boy and no one to do sort of boy stuff with. And he's off there looking at the older girls, trying to hope that they might go and play with them, but they're all too busy having a natter, having a gossip, um, sitting around doing nothing, basically. They're busy being capybaras. 
adult cafe bars are fairly boring. Uh, they sleep. They like sleeping. They do a lot of grazing, so eating grass. It's a glorified lawn mower. With no one to play with, Henry is inventing his own entertainment. He has been seen sort of wandering away from Mum. He's kind of having a little bit of an explore and he's pushing the boundaries a little bit, creating his own mischief, if you like. But it's not long before Henry discovers that his older female relatives do have a fun side. They are semi-aquatic, so they're excellent at swimming. They can hold their breath underwater for ages, so they're quite well adapted to life around water. Once you get them into the water, that sort of childhood play behaviour all comes back to the surface and they're diving in and out of the pool, swimming around, having a great time. So you can imagine that Henry's probably watching. He's probably thinking, you know, I want a little bit of that. But Henry needs his mum to teach him how to swim safely first. When you're younger, you do try a few things and they may not be the best idea. So Lily's got to keep an eye on him. She's got her hands full with this one, making sure he's not straying too far, jumping in ponds that he shouldn't be jumping into, that sort of thing. That could be sort of fatal for a little one. In the capybara paddock, only child Henry has managed to stay out of any more trouble. And much of that is down to all the females rallying round. Capybaras are a really good example of allo parenting. So it's where other members of the group chip in and if at any point little Henry gets stuck or gets lost or whatever, then the other older animals, they, they really do come together. Sometimes other females will produce milk as well um, so that they can feed youngsters. Being an only child, it does have its advantages for sure. The little guy is... Um, the only male we've got in the group at the moment, so he is allowed to do what he likes. And so, yeah, he's getting all this attention off all his ladies and they're all spoiling him rotten. He's definitely the golden boy. When the food goes in in the mornings, he'll jump straight in the trough and just sit in the trough. Um, he fits absolutely perfectly and they, nobody else seems to care. They just let him sit there and have his, his fiddle and he's just monopolising the trough completely. Spoiled little brat. We were really thinking that this was going to be the biggest litter we've ever had for capybaras here. In the end, it turned out we just got one, but boy, he gets all the attention that 10 capybaras would have had. And I'm sure he's got a really good future ahead of him. Thank you.